Hello and welcome to episode 2 of How to Contract in Kerbal Space Program. My name is Jim and today we are going to take a look at some of the new contracts that have popped up in the Mission Control building. We have, in the first episode, we completed the first four contracts that everyone always gets. These are procedurally generated. Um, they follow certain patterns, so we'll kind of go through what's in here real fast and take a look at how uh, how they do things and what they look like. So, for example, here's a test, a Mark 16 parachute in flight over Kerbin. Uh, one star means it's kind of trivial, two stars means it's uh, a significant, and three stars means it's exceptional. So a nice little look, go back to our parachute test here. So it expires in two days so we have two days to accept it or we can just decline it and note with no penalty. Uh, once we accept it we have one year to carry it out otherwise we fail. Okay to perform the test we have to activate the parachute with the staging and we have to do it between an altitude of 17,900 meters and 26,600 meters and we have to be going 110 meters per second over 110 meters per second or less than 310 now a lot of these flight ones getting this combination is kind of complicated uh, you have to watch two numbers at once so in general, we're going to kind of avoid these. Now also, the reward isn't that great. Uh, but we'll talk about more about this and how to actually accomplish these later. But right now, we want to get some good, solid contracts that can continue our progress. Right now, we have 111,000 funds. And we have uh, a good start towards unlocking the next thing in the science tree. Okay, the next one is text, test a Rokomax, Rokomax Mark 55 radio mount liquid engine landed. So that means once we fire it on the launch pad, we automatically uh, complete this contract. So these are kind of good ones to kind of save up. So here's solid fuel booster in flight over Kerbin. Again, this is one 18,000 meters. 26,000 meters usually our solid fuel boosters are our first stage and so we're not quite at these altitudes before we burn them and then these speeds are we're probably over 400 at this altitude so this is one you have to kind of fiddle with the flight profile so again this is something we're going to uh, mostly avoid test a stack decoupler in flight over Kerbin. Uh, same thing. This one in particular, 200 meters per second at 20,000 meters. Uh, that's really slow. So that's a difficult one to get. Uh, land of the Kerbin. La launch stability enhancer. Land of the Kerbin. Again, all we have to do is launch. And this is the uh, uh, the scaffolding on the uh, launch pad so this is an easy test as soon as we launch we uh, complete the contract uh, not much reward a 50 fund advance and 189 for completing but we get 14 science out of it so that's pretty cool what was the other one that landed we didn't look at the reward uh, again a f just a few hundred and but 14 science so we could do those two pretty easily. Okay, and here's a rescue mission. Dilbro Kerbin is orbiting Kerbin. And we have to go up and rendezvous with him and allow him to get in the capsule and bring him home. So if we can get in the orbit, we can do this. So this is a one that falls into the category of eminently doable. Uh, test an LVT-45 liquid fuel engine orbiting Kerbin. This is pretty much the engine we were using for our last stage of our orbital ship last episode. So again, this is something we can do easily as part 
of the rescue mission. So we'll, th we'll think of these together. Uh, test the Rokamax 487S orbiting Kerbin. Uh, I don't recall what this engine is. Um, that might be the weaker engine. But again, this is something that's probably pretty easy to do. Uh, test the salt fuel, fuel booster orbiting Kerbin. Okay, we, here's where we have to start getting into building specialized ships to get that into orbit so we can test it. So I put these in a different category. These we can do as part of a normal flight profile with a normal ship. These might need some extra fiddling to get these parts into orbit and testable. Uh, test the separatron and a suborbital trajectory. Uh, that's not too e too hard because we could just have separatrons on whatever stage uh, we'd be firing when we're suborbital. So pretty much, if we put a couple of these on the tanks that are running uh, this engine, uh, we can do that, stage it separately, and just add to our boost for a few seconds and wouldn't change anything about our mission. Uh, explore the moon. Okay, that's its own different thing. That's its own set of problems, and we'll tackle that in time. And test small gear bay orbiting curve. Um, three stars. Let's take a look at the road. 41 science, 48,000 funds. So that's definitely something we want to do. But that would be part of probably part of these testing these two things and this at the same time so looking over these uh, let's let's go ahead and decline the ones we aren't aren't interested in at the moment we want to keep our uh, contract situation as clear as possible it's very easy to get confused and start doing things that really uh, start compromising our space program. So we want to avoid those at the moment at all costs. So we're going to go ahead and decline that. We're going to decline... Oh no, that's one we're going to do. Solid booster in flight, we're going to decline that. Uh, As we decline that, see we're getting new ones. Science data from space around Kerbin. See, here we go. So if we collect science around Kerbin, we would get 31,000 funds. We can do that while we're rescuing Dilbro. So... Let's get rid of these others we're not going to do in flight. These flight ones, like I said, these get pretty complicated fast, so we're going to decline that. Uh, looks like we got a new test, the just different parameters. So they'll keep asking for some of these will pop up over and over again. So it looks like declining is a good way of getting new ones. And we got one that we can do. So, But first, let's do the landed ones. So now we got a radial decoupler landed at Kerbin. So now we have three. So let's do them. Let's test Rokamax Mark 55. Let's ta test the launch stability enhancer. And let's test the radial decoupler. And any others landed, orbiting, 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 suborbital, orbiting, flight, and orbiting. Okay, so let's go do this. So now we go into the VAB. Uh, we need one of these for now. We don't have a probe yet, so we have to have a manned mission. So we have to make sure that we don't risk this Kerbal's life. 
So we'll put a parachute and we'll put a decoupler here so we can get away. Okay, so now let's look at our contracts and we can do that down here. So radio mount liquid engine, that is this engine right here. So we need to put that around a tank. We also need to test the stability enhancers. So we'll need to test that. And we'll need to test the TT70 radial decoupler. That is this one. All land at a curbin. So what we need to do is this is really simple. We just need a regular fuel tank. We need a, two of these engines. Uh, actually, let's... Just because I need more room for stuff. Put two of these engines here. So that will give us our thrust. We are going to mount two of these this way and we're just going to put small tanks on the end of that because we're just going to throw those off as soon as we launch because remember it has to be landed once we take off the conditions for these decouplers being tested no longer applies and then we just need to test a couple of these. So that is our rocket that will accomplish three contracts as soon as we hit the space bar. And here's the ones we did before. So let's go ahead and discard these just so they're not in our way on the interface. All right, crew, okay, Jebediah, you can go again. Let's save this. So this is uh, ship number, design number two. Landed tests number one. Because we might get more of these uh, contracts later, so we'll need, and we'll need to build different ships for that. All right, and let's be save that. And before we head to the launch pad, this cost us 7,122 to build. So we have plenty of money, and we're uh, it doesn't show what we're going to get here. Uh, that's one thing I wish this interface would do. Oh yeah, we need to ch check our. Uh, staging because all this stuff has to stage all at the same time to count as being landed at Kerbin. When we, so we'll test those engines, we'll test the stability enhancers, and we'll test the decouplers. So let's save that with a new staging and launch. All right, we are on the launch pad. Uh, thrust is 50%. That's one thing you'll notice with the new version is it'll automatically put thrust at 50%. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and boost it up to 100%. And put SAS on. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up our contracts, keep them highlighted so we can see them and as soon as we hit base bar in three two one lift off we have accomplished all three of these contracts and we have gained uh, not that much science yet or funds I'll have to look at what yeah we cut we spent 7,000, it looks like we got a couple thousand back, so we'll have to look. Actually, we can look at it here while we're flying up. So we only got 189 there, 241 there, and 382. But we're getting science, so this... Yeah, 14 for each of these, 42 total. I'd say that's a pretty good little 
exchange. So let's just go ahead and close all that. And we were up to 16,000 meters. And once again, I'm going to speed up the footage and just let this fall back to the ground. Be right back. Okay, I am back, and if you noticed, I've switched the staging. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go ahead and open the parachute. And we're going to see if we how much of this we can save. Uh, because remember, we get funds back for parts that we recover. So if any of this survives, uh, we'll get extra funds back. I should have cut my engines before I completely ran out of fuel and that way I'd have enough to kind of pad my landing here so that's something I will keep in mind for future missions but let's see what happens here how much explodes okay well we pretty much got the capsule back which we would have gotten if we would have staged anyway so no loss but no gain either Anyway, we are back on the ground. Let's recover this. And I did a crew report uh, while I was up there. So I got a crew report from up there, atmosphere 4, 3.5 science. And then we have a total of 75. So I think we're going to lock something else. And here's where we got our command pod and our parachute. And... Did one of those actually survive? Oh, well, must have just fell off and flew away somewhere, but we did get the decoupler back and the monopropellant. All right, so we're up to 106,000. So the mission lost about 5,000 funds, but that's okay because we gained quite a bit of science. Here we got Jebediah back. So let's go into the science building here and take a look at what we can get and I think the bigger and the bigger fuel tanks and those radial engines will be our next item yeah let's go ahead and do that and we have 30 science left so we only need 15 to uh, unlock the rest of this all right, so back to mission control. Okay, so active, we have nothing active because we accomplished all three of those. And now it's available. Uh, we got some more landed, but we're going to move on. We're going to do an orbit. We're going to start with the rescue. That's our, fir our main goal. So we'll get a 12,000 advance and we'll get 50,000 for completion. No science. But while we're on our way, we can test a couple of things up there uh, because uh, I should have looked to see what this engine was. Uh, that, so this, this we can do without affecting our rescue mission. And we can also, this will be our engine while we're in space anyway. So we can easily test that in space. We'll get eight science and 26,000 funds. Oh, now let's just take a quick look. Anything else orbiting? That's like I said, that and that and that are slightly more difficult will take their own mission in flight in flight in flight and just one landed we want to try to get several done at once with these landed ones and science data from space round curve and we can do this while we're rescuing 
our Kerbal up in orbit. So we have four active now, two of which do not require special parts. I'm just collecting science and rescuing Dilbro. And then we do test other things on the way. So back to the VAB. Now we could use the orbital stage we used before, but I want to improve on that. And they also notice that it shows the cost of these ships here. And this is the auto save version of this. It's the same ship. So we can actually look at our costs when we're looking in the load screen. Anyway, let's do a new one. Cancel this, start a new. Okay, we have our main capsule. Remember, we're rescuing somebody, so we need a second capsule. Let's just stick that right on top. We need utility. There it is. Uh, we need a little bit of extra parachute power, so let's go ahead and do two of these. There's a test for this in flight, but I'm not going to worry about that. Oops, they could get symmetry. And then it wants us to do science in orbit. We've done most of the EVAs. So let's bring a couple of goo pods. We'll stick them on this capsule. There we go. Kind of a funky looking little collection there. This should work. And let's, because we are adding extra weight to this, let's put that there. And so we have three parachutes. All right, stack decoupler under that. We're not going to worry about saving anything else on the ship. Propulsion, a half tank here with the LT T LV T45 uh, LV909 so I'm not sure what the other one they want to test it. I think it might be one of the mini engines anyway that's that stage our rescue stage and then coming back so now we need another stack decoupler and then here we can use one of these big tanks. But let's add on to a little bit. That, we need to get this up a little bit higher. Have to grab it from this uh, capsule because this is the root structure of this ship. See if I grab this one, it just pulls right off. All right, and the LT, LV T45 engine there. So that's going to get us into orbit. And now we need booster stage, or first stage. So now we have these. Let's go four times symmetry. Go, once again, go with the big tank. These cost 1600 each. And we're going to add another half tank to those. And with four more engines. As you can see, this ship is getting pretty expensive. 27,000. We're going to make 50,000 from, I think, the rescue alone. Plus we got an advance of pretty good, good amount, so we're at already 140,000. So we would be pretty good. I think we're okay, but now we have strut, so let's just do a little bit of reinforcing. And then we can put these out. It only costs 200 each. And I think, am I missing anything? We're gonna test that. Oh yeah, the little separatrons. They're in propulsion. So we're just gonna stick a couple 
because we're, we're suborbital, so we'll stick a couple right there, and we'll fire that off with that engine, because that will give us a little extra boost uh, when we're firing anyway. Yes, because we will be suborbital, I think, does mean out of the atmosphere. And so this stage should be out of the atmosphere when we start burning it. All right, now the rest. We want that to burn with that decoupling. We want those to burn with that releasing. And all these to burn when that... That's to separate these and then our parachute. Okay, so we are ready to fly. Okay, crew, it's time to rotate. Let's get Bill Kerman. After this, I'll add, let's say, get him out and add Bill Kerman to the main command pod. And keep that one empty for our rescuee. And save and launch. Just realized I forgot to save it as a particular name, but that's okay. All right, um, we're not too worried about that at the moment, so let's put up resources. SAS on, throttle to about two-thirds again. Three, two, one, lift. Oh, nope, need a little more oomph. So not between two-thirds and full. It's a little heavier because of the extra capsule and goo pods. And uh, it's, there's a possibility that this ship does not have quite enough to get into orbit, but I'm not too worried. We had a lot of extra fuel in the last stage last time, so we should be okay. But this is the principle I, I, I advise you to follow until you really get a hang of what kind of contracts you want, is bundle of contracts in similar flights. Uh, orbital uh, flights are a good one to use. Uh, landed are a good one to use. Uh, f the flying ones, like I said, they're problematic mostly because of the velocities at certain altitudes kind of don't make sense for the flight profile. Like for example, we're approaching 200 meters per second, less than 10,000 meters. So like I can go ahead and extend this burn a bit. Yeah, we can go ahead and lean over a bit. It looks like we'll get up to between 15 and 20,000 before the stage burns out. And so next after this we'll do, we'll put together that orbital ship that will test those other parts. And that, you know, should be a, a nice little mission that will get us some good funds. Okay, ready the stage. Throttle up. It's one thing we'll remember to do because this stage is pretty weak. So that's why I'm going a little more vertical, not turning over the 45 until we're at 30,000 meters. So, okay, let's take a look at the map view. 45,000, so we're, and here's our rescuee, Dilbro and set him as target and he's at what altitude is he at? he's at 108,000 okay so we'll go ahead and because we're ahead of him uh, we should have timed it better but we'll go ahead and go up to well, let's get in orbit first so let's just do 75 
and we should use up most of the rest of this tank of this stage building up our speed and then the last little bit will be this one which, which will fire the separatrons and test that it will also test this engine just by the sake of being attached at the right time and staged at the right time Okay, 47 seconds. Okay, we're, the music means we're in space. 70,000 meters or higher. Okay, let's start burning. I'm going to do a, like, a kind of slow burn, two-thirds. Let's start off here. And if... Uh, this stage actually would accomplish getting us into orbit. We don't want to do that, actually. So we'll cut engines and stage and let the last stage complete it. That way we complete our... Uh, oh, we can get rid of these. These are the ones we did before. All right, let's take a look at our stage. Still got quite a bit of fuel left. Go ahead and fire it up because we're our apwaps is getting behind us, so we want a little bit of oomph. And then tilt up a little bit just to keep it going. 1800. Okay, it did cut out. So now when we stage, we should get two of these right away. Altitude. I didn't look at, take a look at that parameter. That's interesting. Alright, so we're in orbit. And I'm not sure if there's a way I can restage these. Uh, well, since we have time, let me let me look at this because this is the kind of thing that might come up because we don't definitely don't want to. Well, what we can do don't think we can fire that off in space, or can we? Okay, so we need to be above 87,000. What's our... Whoa, our apoaps is way up there. Uh, well, I wasn't paying attention when we were burning, but that's kind of okay because it'll help us uh, reach a rendezvous with, with uh, Dilbro. So this is one of the reasons why this contract system kind of gets people in a frazzle because there's so many different things to keep track of at once. You're not just going to rescue him, you're trying to do this side mission. Uh, you're trying to test these different parts that you haven't used before. You're trying to reach particular altitudes and velocities. So it gets pretty confusing. So let's get up to the altitude we need, 87,000. Okay, so th there's we're at the proper altitude. Now the question is, okay, so if I shut down the engine, stage the parachute, and then stage the engine. Okay, I have achieved 
I have achieved the uh, test condition. So that's the second one. Now we need to go, actually the next one is science. Uh, in near Kerbin, uh, 10 science. Uh, let's save it for, uh, yeah, let's save it for when we land because we'll get some uh, landed science. Otherwise, we'll just get about th three from doing the second one. So we'll see where we land. All right, now the question is, let's rescue Dilbro. So we need to rendezvous. All right, so if we do... Do a bit of a burn. Those purple ones should start coming together. 10 kilometers, 20. So somewhere in there. 43 meters per second. Very, very quick burn. Oops, uh, I... The staging didn't reactivate the engine, so I have to do that. Alright, so, quick, do that little quick burn. I'm not too concerned about missing the, uh... We actually got better than the, uh, maneuver. Six kilometers. Okay, so let's go over there. And so we'll get our first lesson in rendezvousing. I didn't really go into detail of how I found it. It's kind of kind of natural for me. So if you're confused, uh, I will go over this in more detail in later episodes or future rescue missions. Okay, but at this part of it, I will explain in detail as we get close. Now what we want to do is we need to cut our, our velocity between us and the target. Now we'll pretty much equalize our orbits. So 200 meters per second, that's quite a bit. Let's get rid of that. So we got to cut that velocity down quite a bit. Let's chase that down a little bit just to be a little more accurate. All right, we're within one meters per second. So now you can see that our orbits are pretty close to identical. Not super close, but we're within range. Uh, so we're 13 kilometers away now. So we let them get a little bit away from us. So the next step is to burn towards them. And when you're doing rendezvous maneuvers, one of the things you can do is you can chase the yellow towards the pink when you're doing prograde. Actually, sorry, the other way around. You pull the yellow towards pink. So even I get confused, I've done this a billion times. And then once it's aligned, we can go ahead and burn. Let's go ahead and get 25 meters per second to close things up a bit. Then we can get over here. Let's get resources up. Uh, electrical charge is an issue because we don't have solar panels yet. The engines do recharge. But okay, let's uh, time warp. Get him closer. And now you can see he's kind of like going off to the side and the markers are moving away. It's because we're in different orbits. And as we move around, we end up kind of getting off track. Now here's where if you burn, you chase yellow towards the retrograde. So I've done that. So chase a little bit more. 
And there we go. So now we're going 20 meters per second. And we're lined up once more. Let him drift a bit closer. Try to get within a couple hundred meters. And then let him do the rest with his rocket pack. Okay, we're... Yeah, we're still... Getting closer. But not quite at the rate we want. So let's chase this closer again. Alright, now he's within 1200 meters, so it starts reading out in meters. Just let that close in, and hopefully get around to the sun side here. There we go, there's some light. 200 meters, okay. Let's just shut down this last little bit of relative velocity with our main engines here. And then using the bracket keys, we switch over to Dilbro. We push R to liven them up and turn on his jetpack. And then we look around for our ship, there it is. Now we can start kind of burning towards it. Uh, don't overdo it because these jetpacks, yeah, see I'm already really coming at it pretty pretty quickly. Let's double click it to set it as a target. Prepare to slow down. There we go, go down. Fords again. So these rescue missions come up fairly regularly. You know, you have to ask yourself whether the rewards listed on the contract are worth it or not, but generally these aren't too bad. And I'm. Kind of flailing around. The hatch is at a very bad angle. Let's see if we can grab it without being flung into space again. Alright, now we can crawl up, board the ship. And we can see we've met one of the uh, conditions of the contract. Get Dilbro Kerman aboard a vessel. And that's what this new message is, is he is now part of the space program crew. But we still need to actually rescue him. And um, another reason to leave, I just thought of another reason to leave this goo pod clear. Because of the extra science here, if we get this mission again, we could always use the goo pod for this little bit of extra science to complete that mission. And, you could, and there'll be a, a sliver left for a third as well, But so we're just going to reset that. And now it's time to go home. Um, because we're not really getting a lot of uh, recovery of our ship. We're going to attempt to land in the desert and get science from that. Uh, surface sample, goo pod, crew report, EVA, all that good stuff. So let's kind of move in a little bit closer. Because remember, we st with all these contracts, we still have to worry about getting science to unlock our tech tree. But we can do that as part of a lot of these other missions. Okay, so now I need to get on retrograde. And go ahead and burn. Yeah, 
107,000 meters. So we know this orbital design works very well. Still have quite a bit of fuel left. And then come down, sh we'll point at these mountains, that way we'll come down short somewhere in this area because again I don't want to land in mountains if I can help it. And one other thing to do is let's get Dilboro out one more time. And I guess the chute really hasn't been activated yet, so it should activate once it gets in the atmosphere. It's staged, but not activated. So let's go ahead and board them again. I just wanted to check that out. So let's move this back up to there. And now it's just a matter of getting home. There's a kind of nice little shot. Get a thumbnail. All right, guys, let's get you home. Go ahead and warp. And then I will also warp the footage, and I'll see you guys near the ground. All right, we are down. And let me recenter this so we can do a couple more things. Okay, so with our unused goo pod, we're in the desert, so we got three science there. We can do a crew report in the desert, okay. And we can get out Bill, not Dilbro. Dilbro won't be able to get back in, but Bill will. So we can EVA him and keep him on the ladder first. And then board. EVA again. Let go. Oop, fall to the ground. Waddle a couple of steps. EVA report from the surface and the surface sample. Lots of sand and rocks here. Sure looks hot. All right, nine more science there. All right. Let's go ahead and board, grab, whoops, no ragdolling, grab, board, recover. And from our regular science experiments, we retrieve 34.2 science. Now we've ended up with 80 science total. Let's see, parts. And we got eh, 2,900 back. That's not too bad. And we're up to 242,000 in our fund. So we are moving up pretty nicely. And of course, we got two guys back in our crew. Take a look at our completed contracts. 31,000 there, one science, and 145 reputation. Let's go ahead and discard that. 
Uh, rescue Dilbro, we got 50,000 and 25 reputation. Uh, added to the crew. Uh, got him aboard the vessel, that added another 6,200 to that mission. And then 26,000 for testing the engine. And 11,999, so 12,000. And 8 science for testing the separatrons. So very, very successful mission. So that will do it for this episode. Next episode, we'll start talking about constructing specialized ships to accomplish these contracts under very specific circumstances. So we'll do uh, with these orbital... Oh, we, they've added Poodle to it. And Skipper in Flight... But yeah, we'll do some of these orbital missions, and we may even try one of the the flights just to see, you know, the difficulties involved in meeting those parameters. But anyway, that's it for episode two of How to Contract in Kerbal Space Program. My name is Jim. I want to thank you for joining me. Have a great day.